Hi, my name is Connor Phelan, and this is my midterm assignment on Suleiman al Basam's The Al Hamlet Summit. In Margaret Litvin's interview with Suleiman al Basam, he talks about the subject of liminality. I've always found myself coming back to work on the liminal space between language, power systems, and culture. These are the areas of human interaction that are heavily marked and determined by ideology, stereotype, and prejudice within which the arc of the play carves out a new space for interaction and thought. The word liminal is difficult to define, but effectively is thought of as the area between transitioning from one place to the other. And this is the direction in which to pursue the Al Hamlet Summit. The Al Hamlet Summit takes a political approach to Shakespeare's typically dramatic and tragic subject matters. While this play does showcase the familiar aspects of Shakespearean writing, it also takes serious subject matter into account. On account of Shakespeare's fictional writing, the display approaches aspects of realism in a landscape that is transitioning into something uncertain. Uncertainties that may have a detrimental effect on the portrayal of the Middle East. In exploring this idea, I will view different aspects of the play within the umbrella term of liminality in transition, in hiding, in concealment, and in disguise. In the Al Hamlet Summit, it carries with it Shakespeare's narrative of Hamlet and Ophelia. However, given the political nature of the play, aspects of this become slightly altered. In this story of Hamlet's typical detachment and overt fascination on part of Ophelia, Ophelia becomes a political aversion as Hamlet threatens to abandon the political motives of Claudius and Gertrude. Ophelia, despite her being a prominent character in Shakespeare's Hamlet, has also been seen as someone distant and emotionally repressed. And this is something that continues in this adaptation. Claudius and Gertrude use Ophelia as a political tool to deter Hamlet and subdue his intentions. I propose their marriage. What does this have to do with the new democracy? It would entertain the press. Their proposed marriage comes as a disguise of the transitioning political landscape. Ophelia's feelings for Hamlet are foregone in the nature of this, and then Hamlet's reluctance, his this political aversion of marriage, is foregone in place of continuing to append the terrain of Middle Eastern conflict. The next time you meet Hamlet, you will ask him in a roundabout or honeyed way. Questions like, where have you been? What have you been writing? What are you doing with your nights? In using Ophelia to dissuade Hamlet, it becomes clear how Claudius and Gertrude intend to change Ophelia. Gertrude tells Ophelia, you'll make an excellent liar. In place of Ophelia's true, delicate nature, in changing her motives to one of falsehood, comes as a detriment to her mind and outlook. However, in failing to avert Hamlet's volatile nature, Ophelia is sent away. In Shakespeare's death of Ophelia, it is perceived as delicate and tragic. There is the famous painting of Ophelia by John Everett Millet, of Ophelia singing before drowning in the river, surrounded by nature. In progressing to the Middle Eastern stage, al Balsam subverts this delicate image into one of tragedy but does so in a volatile and gruesome nature. The transitory nature of taking a popular Western text and depicting it in the Middle Eastern landscape is showcased here. Perhaps it is Hamlet's political narrative that serves as a threat to the established Arabic landscape. In Claudius, Gertrude's and Ophelia's attempts to subvert these matters, their collective failure to do so references to Turing of pre and post 9-11 Middle Eastern affairs and the subsequent conflict that looms ahead. Considering Margaret Litvin's explosive signifiers, she notes how September 11 didn't really change anything. Sure, the door was blown off, but whatever was behind the door was already there. Effectively, 9-11 created the motive to completely transform the landscape of the Middle East. Ultimately, my main idea surrounding the subject of liminality 
involves looking to the stage design. Throughout the majority of the play, the characters perform within the confines of the conference corridors. As the play progresses, however, the characters begin to venture out beyond these confines. Upon observing the futility of the play's political narrative, the final scene of the play emphasizes the nature of Middle Eastern and Western relations. In a way, this play comments on the fate surrounding Arabic political developments following the events of 9-11. And as each character falls to the civil war, neatly orchestrated by the arms dealer, they step beyond the boundaries of the stage, transitioning between the traditional landscape of Arabic culture into one of Western US influence, where war thrives and its people become displaced and killed. The arms dealer plays a significant role in the play's ending, ultimately controlling the civil war as if resistant to liability. Through observing the events at the end of al Bassam's play, we ultimately observe the effect of Western US interference and therefore view the Middle Eastern conflict as one that is not their own, but outwardly orchestrated. In switching the perspective to one of US interest, al Bassam's play becomes a commentary on the extent of US power. While the Middle East transitioned into a place of war, poverty, death and displacement, the US simultaneously entered into a new era, primarily trespassing in pursuit of capital interest. al Bassam's play draws on the Middle Eastern experience in war. And while the play emphasizes the post 9-11 landscape, it also alludes to the next era in American capitalism and consumption, fed by never-ending wars across its borders.